it was just it was abusive <laughs> what we were seeing Boston do. I mean, it was Miracle got bullied in game. Yeah, man. it was a bullying. It was it was. You know, it might be like rated T for teen, okay? I don't show children what we saw there. It wasn't rated M, but it was, uh, you know, it, it got a little bit graphic at times. So, going to BOE now. Highly contested Hanzo map. Let's see if Blossom wants to prioritize that over the Tracer here. This will be the map pick of Blossom. Miracle will yet again have first pick and first bat. So, oftentimes we see this pattern. We don't really see it on screen, but whenever there's a Sonya pick and we see the lane getting destroyed and the other format just has a fun time rotating around, but the bottom lane is already basically destroyed all the tower time, maybe even a fourth down. We even saw a solo kill from the rotation, not solo kill, kill rotation. I think Blaze or if they pick the Haka Leoric, the team needs to recognize that our laning hero is having a hard time. Maybe bring someone down there and make him have a better time by helping out. And that's the reason why Sonya was able to dominate. Basically, after losing Blaze twice, they could never catch the macro into the game. Yeah, they were basically always behind in that regard. And Blaze, the second time he died, he was completely dove. Mm -hmm. And that just gives you a great understanding. That, that itself tells you a lot about what happened in the game, in fact. You know, Blaze cannot even under fort try to get close to me as he will die. Means a wave clear on the other side, means tons of minions pushing through. Forts are going down. The other team is just not able to use their wave clear. That's pretty reasonable for a span given how things went in game one. <laughs> yes. And a snipe fan against, of course, of course against Gondar. This leaves Genji open. Also Hanzo. I have a feeling they will just keep the same with the Malfurion. <laughs> Uh, which is a bit worrisome, different battlegrounds. But Blossom has the chance to grab either one, or it's even the Tracer. It's definitely, I think, best to take the Hanzo here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Dudu has changed his mindset a little bit. What's Dudu, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, going in. He had a pretty fun time. A Garrosh was basically taking 90% of the damage. I wanted to see the number on how much damage it took because basically the damage never came into the back line look at this blossom picking up Medivh and sonia this pair up has been specifically coming out in korea most of the time yeah also in other regions but they think i think korean players are thinking this pair up is the best when it's paired up with sonia mostly well you know Cloak and made two rework videos for these two reworked heroes, and uh, they both made it into the meta. There are big reworks coming through Sonya. Proctor development teams. Yeah. Development team getting what they wanted here. Although, like, Medivh looks like he's he's seen better days. His eyes will look bloodshot. <laughs> he's been, like, watching too many videos of... Uh, of old Medivh and getting stressed out. So watching Medivh's die, watching Master's Touch be taken away from him. He's just been watching that footage, getting really frustrated. Put on a darker, like more black hood now. You have that as a baseline now, so he'll yeah. be fine. He'll be, he should be fine. Well, Hanzo gets given a miracle. Don't know how fine that's gonna be. As Medivh only gets cooldown reduction if he hits heroes, he's not gonna be able to compete with that kind of damage. We need something else. Maybe it's gonna be pure dive here. Maybe Blossom goes into like a Tyrael and some sort of other very heavy, heavy hyper carry like a gray main of ala I haven't seen hyper carries since double support has been gone most you know most of the time some exceptions of the double support tracer which we just saw in game one still etc pick up i think a better choice into the map of uh, also soft counters the portal a little bit with the face melt can actually help decently when they're trying to Provide some escapes. Also, great TC, of course, as the ETC. Genji Ban here is pretty smart. Could have been the the hero that gets double shielded. You know, it's going to be uh, it is going to be one DPS, like some sort of hyper carry here for Blossom, almost certainly. So if it was Genji Uther, they locked in right now. It's like, oh, that's actually terrifying. Then they like lock in, you know, uh, the fifth pick Tyrael. There's a lot you could do with that. So now I think we're looking at range DPS here, like a. Gray main. 
like a Vala I suggested earlier, but did not come true. Junkrat, I'm not really seeing the value there. When you only have Medivh, you can protect the Junkrat, sure, but you're always going to lose out in trades, always going to lose out in the races. You have Concussive Mind to try to burst down the Hanzo and the Malfurion, especially before Ice Block, but... Mm -hmm. Even though it looks weird, I think it's still possible to have Liming. Two mages, kind of weird in the in the draft, but against CTC, still very possible in a way. Maybe they think Polybomb might be enough. Cassia, even before the Greymane, I was thinking maybe after watching the last picks of Miracle, if they pick up Greymane, then Cassia to finish the draft. But they want to bring that out early. I suppose Miracle could still run the Tracer here. It wouldn't be normal, but it's possible, so Cassia can be good against that too. Um, yeah, I don't think the support choice is really going to be that much up for debate. Like, I think it's it's Rhaegar 100%. Oh, they already locked Rhaegar. Yeah, what am I saying? it was 100%. It was, yeah, it's you're right, tank, it's the tank. It's the tank we're looking for here. Yeah, you're right, Wolf. <laughs> I don't know, Rhaegar's all mecha and stuff. Like, I I just like was like, I, I, it's in Korea and I wasn't paying attention. I'm like, oh, it's a tank. What's, what's the support pick here? Um, I even wrote it down on my piece of paper zoned out all right so Li Ming I think actually makes sense here because you don't have like for Miracle if they locked in Li Ming they have good poke they have good mm -hmm. race potential they can they have defensive ways to deal with the dive on the side of Blossom it's mostly dive we're seeing here but they take Malthale for his damage and the win in the matchup against Sonya they take Tracer because well comfort picks and it's Tracer Malfurion that was kind of what I was alluding to earlier Even with these picks, though, I feel so lame against Sonya. It's going to be easier time. Of course, Blaze was banned this time. Could have been a very bad matchup with ETC paired up with Blaze. So much CC. We saw that happen over and over again. Of course, not having the best screen rate, but Diablo. Diablo. Well, it's Subway Diet Diablo too. <laughs> so way tight, Diablo. I guess there's a lot of I guess there's a lot of ways to lock down Tracer with this. But otherwise I think you're gonna have a really bad time against ETC Malthale, Hanzo, you're gonna get poked down. I think this is something else that we saw before a long time ago. Maybe they're just thinking of the Leyline Seal. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say Leyline Seal is definitely gonna be the heroic with this choice. Teriel could have given a lot more protection. But Diablo is great for locking down the Tracer. We're going to see a lot of APOC uh, charge combos to make sure Tracer gets stunned. There's a lot of things you can do to prevent the Tracer from escaping with this. But this is just, this is very Blossom-esque. You know, you have a lot of meta picks you could have chosen, but no. You've got to pick the Diablo because that's the approach you're going to take to this draft because it's a little bit different, a little bit unusual. Blossom Spray Synergy. If it was Judy picking Diablo, I would agree. This is Gondar's first Diablo this year. And he only played Diablo three times last year. And there are lots of other picks like Stitches, ETC, Garrosh, and Uberok. And he even played Cho three times and played Diablo three times. So that's how small of an amount that he played Diablo. But also on this map, not the best one, I would say. Like Inferno Shrines may be a lot better for the pick. Yeah, I mean, look, he can get kills. Will he get kills in the early game? Is a question that Blossom will have to answer to me. Because if, if he does not, he's going to have a tough time getting souls on a two-lane map. Very tough time. He's going to struggle in the immortal phases against a Hanzo composition. He's going to get outpoked by Hanzo Tracer. Sure, yep. Tracer. If Tracer's shooting the Diablo, he has great opportunities to stun her, but not in the open, not around the Immortals. That's when it gets tough. Tracer's actually uh, looking for a pick top lane in a one matchup already. That's somewhat wasteful. Maybe trying to trick Blossom. Doesn't even have the Pulse Bomb ready. Yeah, that was a little bit weird from Sniper. But this laning, both team does have Wave Clear, and it's not going to really go anywhere unless someone makes a super crazy uh, positioning mistake. So I think they were just trying to rotate. 
Gondar, with the big hitbox, will be an easier time for Judy to actually get that stack completed from the beginning. Yeah. That's what you want to do with the Hanzo, with the simple geometry. You always look for that big hitbox, usually the tank. And that's 137, 137. completed. There you go, good call. And of course, you don't want to give those, give that stack completed. It's becomes so much easier time to camp from level 4. During the first Immortal fight, of course. This is a pretty big win uh, for Miracle. They actually, right now, technically three versus two, while Rhaegar's head up, while Rhaegar head up. They actually were doing, they were winning this lane, and they got the top neutral cap. And now that uh, a rotation happens down back bottom, mm -hmm. they can actually take the other neutral camps. They can actually get both camps against a Diablo draft. This, in theory, should not happen. And now because, for some reason, Rhaegar decided to go all the way up, Nasong is not here. So contesting this, even with the Diablo pick, is pretty difficult to pull off. And you know what? They're just going to have to let it go. I think they're looking for that level 10, as we mentioned. The Wombo combo, along with some damage from Cassia, Sonya. They're trying to trap some targets, and especially Hanzo. I think that's the target they won't really want to snipe for. Tracer will be a little bit tougher with Blink and Recall available all the time. Yeah, Leyline Seal is a pretty slow animation. I so. think they're, after watching the first few minutes of the game, they're really just not trying to get, have the have a big global gap when they hit 10. And make sure they just don't fall behind too much before that level 10 until they have that team fight potential and then try to win off of that. Yeah, there were just some bizarre rotations from Nasong specifically. He got the camp. Well, they didn't get it super fast or anything. That was a cool idea to try to time that with the stun there a little Their bit too early. Their job is to delay, delay, delay. Judy, look at what Judy's doing. Untouched. Damage, 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 damage. That's what he's doing. Still hasn't taken a single hit point of damage. Okay, there's the fire strike hitting him. Look at how much Miracle's dominating this point. The Diablo pick not being too worthwhile. He's going to go ahead and grab ETC. First pick of the game. First blood here at 343. But they it, lose the hot halftime, yeah. though. Now some body block. That's a trade. Even better for Miracle. They have to get that lead. They know that Blossom's going super passive. Uh, I, I don't even think this is, they're going to get 5% of the health before this goes down. A more shot from Hanzo clears this up. This is... Like, Hanzo obviously doesn't have his level 7 yet, but... This is why you pick Hanzo on this map. The Diablo pick is just getting totally outclassed, totally outpoked. They got their kill, but as you said, they lost halftime, and then they just didn't have any way to to continue to fight. They had to go leave. They stayed too long, so Bureau got the counter kill with the pulse bomb, as you mentioned. So this is a great lead for Miracle, but I don't know about this Diablo pick, and I don't think it's actually correct. Well, with the Diablo pick, this losing this first one was basically guaranteed, even with that DTC pick. I, I think would agree with that too. I think they'll be happy with just trading one kill. They Their job was to just delay. And of course, this sport is getting damaged, so they're going to have... They have to work on this a little bit carefully, with Sonya also getting chased on the top lane. It's actually taking the fort down. Miracle's taking a big leap into the game. They have a lot of range damage. The thing is, even if we talk about how this Diablo pick is, is stronger post-10, we're going to have another fight where they don't have 10 against Miracle now. Because Miracle has this massive lead, HD2, obviously win the winning matchup against Sonya, even Sniper coming up here just to build Pulse and maybe get a kill. They're going to get double wall. This is a five-man rotation. They get set up for the flank. That's coming in now. That's what this is... I don't know about this, though. Oh, well, let's see. They're diving in. But late on the camp, Diablo alone... Take some damage. Jay Way Yun too much out. damage. Okay, Jayun gets out. The portal helps Diablo escape, but otherwise this is a fantastic trade on the side of Miracle. They do lose Tracer. Finally, for the first time, he hits a Tracer stun. Mm -hmm. The that blind occurs. line helps to, 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 to survive that fight. Nicely done by Blossom. Gondar actually dove in alone. Got me worried for a second. There was a big power slide with the three-man power slide. But Miracle missed a lot of their skill shot damage which was pretty awesome for Blossom to have the chance to get a kill here. I remember too that Miracle went into this knowing that Blossom was rotating up and they still tried to take the camp against the Diablo comp, but even though Gondar 
his first attack attempt to kill Jaehyun failed. They were able to turn it into something else afterwards um, because they grabbed Tracer. But if he had not been able to hit Tracer, and if, I mean, everyone just saw what, how much Hanzo damage came through there. Would have been disastrous. Blossom now does get themselves back into this game a little bit. They're going to take down their own wall, it looks like. Or at least the majority of it here. I feel like everything I say today like becomes not true right afterwards. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to speak too quickly, but... Uh, Blossoms evened up the experience. They were a whole level down. Now they're like a fifth of a level down. So this next immortal phase is now going to be with Miracle having 10 against them. Mm -hmm. So they were successful in that regard. Great rotations from Miracle. Blossom was able to punish a little bit. But in a miraculous way though. I I don't think with the conditions it was supposed to happen. Miracle was could have just escaped from there. Gunja oftentimes has been the target to get picked. Not the most tanky front line. Miracle's about to hit 10, going to be a timing issue here. As Judy's just poking in due to doing some damage, but this portal has been a great method of escaping even for Diablo. But lowers the health pools of everyone on Miracle versus Blossom. Miracle massively ahead with all the poke damage they have. Blossom's pretty low. Rhaegar's healing on overtime right now as we will have a pause. As we talk about overtime, maybe? I have no idea why this happened, but no chat is still observing a paused screen. Maybe Nasang. I think it is an issue from Nasang as he's right in the middle. Either Nasang or Dudu. Um, it does look like Nasang. Anyway, um, the everyone on on the side of Blossom is very low. Mm -hmm. Hanzo obviously has the advantage in terms of uh damage for the race so if we head into this next fight or the the next engagement the next setup it's tough for blossom to actually come into this entrenched position with the hanzo and and, and all the poke with low health heroes so they're gonna have to go back home and tap or they're gonna have to hearth very likely in this next fight unless they can grab a pick um and during that time they're gonna lose half time advantage miracle Tens are right around the corner, I think, because we had the longer soak there for Miracle in the solo lane. They had, uh, they had <laughs> G Club's dancing. They had uh, Malthale down there. They got ten first, yeah, as you can see. Oh, look, they already Lucy actually Lucy they already goes. they already won at halftime before I could even finish saying that. Mm -hmm. And they hit ten. Blossom's about to hit ten, but so it's going to be about the same time. And they look they lost halftime, but all they were waiting and it is not ley line teal. It is just poly bomb. Interesting. Into onto ETC once again, protected. There's that portal, but base melt going to delay some time. Gunza just walking forward to die though. Completely nullified is the damage coming into Wiz. And Miracle did not peel or focus to allow uh, Gunza out of there. He just straight walked in and died. That was a little bit questionable, shall we say. Uh, I see the idea, but this goes back to what you were saying about his tank play so far this season. It's just been a little bit aggressive, but no one was there to help him. HA2 is going to get caught by the stun here, so that's two dead on the side of Miracle. Uh, only 4k left. I know you really want to, want to finish your own Immortal, but you end up losing a lot more in this case. And that's not the first time that happens, so Miracle will actually lose this with a small amount of shield, but Blossom. They did a fantastic job waiting for that moment. Every time Diablo charges in, I think he screams out for that portal and he just makes the safe exit out after getting all that aggro. Yeah, as long as the shielding is continues to be this good, it can certainly work. He's obviously gotten enough kills now to finish his soul stone, so you can tell by his health bars how much health he has it's quite a lot. Um, and he's got a really massive amount of regen too, which means that Rhaegar doesn't have to worry about prioritizing healing on him as much. He could trade. It's another one of those moments. So there's the power slide at right after the phase mount like we were talking about. Gondar does eat a lot of damage, but he's a lot of soul stones, so gets away. You grab a fort, and it looks like they might just be willing to let that be all they take. Nope, they changed my, their minds here and commit in. Going still for a wall. There's still a lot of HP left onto that Komodo to open the wall. And meanwhile, Sonya is pushing the top lane, so it's okay. And they also have the portal to escape, so no big, no, no big deal for Blossom unless they get really caught with some PZ pair up with the arrow, with the CC. The Mosh Pit is also there. 
And last right, actually. Well, I guess it's to try to burn down Gondar in these fights mm -hmm. uh, with the pokes that are coming through. If the face melt can again deny him going into the portal, you hit last right, so there's a silence, something like that. There's enough burst to kill him, burn his soul stone, uh, make him instantly respawn. That could be the idea. A miracle, playing scared now. This Blossom comes in, steals this camp. <coughs> you okay, Wolf? Yeah, I don't know. Every time I cast the UG Cup, I'm like, someone. You're dying. allergic to me. I nice. don't think so. Nice. I just don't like this Diablo pick now. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it a murky? What? <laughs> so far, Gondor's Diablo pick has been working out really well compared to how. Uh, to how like how, how much you, I've judged how it. How much <laughs> you didn't like it at first. I'm liking it a lot more. I think this was well practiced with Modern's Modern basically flexing into anything now with Medivh providing more of a support role for the tank to make an exit. Now they're pressuring into the fort. They waited this long and Gunza has been losing that matchup so hard all the time. Losing that pressure from the front line basically means Hanzo and even Tracer can't really engage. Balthel coming up late. Rotating in after 13. Even starts this mortal phase. They're not gonna invade the camp, doesn't look like. They just wanna play it safe. Because the Diablo pick, as you say, has started to work out, especially once he finished the soul stones, getting those picks. Ooh, big stuns coming through there from the immortal. That's not a good sign. Good face melt there, but Gondar commits and no face melt available. Look at the burst. Good target firing here. Portal allows more rotation over. Wiz gonna hit it. Looking for the spear here onto H82. There's the toss for the combo to kill Malfurion. Couldn't use his ice block because he was stunned. Ancestral will connect here. They do get one trade back onto Cassia. With it might have been who he was trying to Ancestral. <laughs> With the last right, so that would be a kill traded and a single stack on the quest, but they lost a lot more. They have been pushed back. They lost their time to engage. And the most important thing is that Gunja is losing that frontline fight all the time. And guess what? Miracle does not have protection. Protected. No protection, by the way. Yes. Hmm. It's a... Uh, it's something they have to work in mind. What do you really do here as Tracer Judy? Seemed like he was very aggressive last time in the other games, but not as much. And Sniper is trained the Tracer, who's supposed to be a lot more aggressive. I don't think I've ever seen a single solo kills pulse bombs. No, he hasn't really been finding windows of opportunity. It feels like Miracle is just not posturing because of Gunza's weakness on the ETC mm -hmm. to get solo kills onto the Diablo. This is the first time they could have maybe done it, but he was protected. Plan's coming down here onto Wiz, but there is a mosh pit right afterwards. He gets them out of the portal though. Gets out with the portal after the interrupt. Dudu very low, using his trait to survive through that sniper damage. Does go down eventually there to the scatter on the side of Hanzo. Nice they do arrow. get melted on the edge here. This is basically the finally the poke of Miracle coming through, but with the taps on the hearth, <laughs> or sorry, on the uh, well, they come back with full health. Even the Regar diving in. Look at that pulse. That's not going to save your teammates. I think that's just the desperation coming off from Sniper, who has not been really impressive on the Tracer so far. This four man, Anzo grab, there's a spear connecting so low, barely Circle survived. Of protection, pretty strong. Modern life once more. This is a Q and barely survived. Sniper, can he survive against the Regar? I don't nope. think so. Also, I'm gonna kill him there with the signature hero, the wolf bite. That's gonna be another one immortal here. This one's going to be equally less shielded. About the exact same going top. So we'll have to go through the fort, but they're gonna have level 16. Mm -hmm. It could be critical of Sniper's inability to find pulses, but it's very difficult against a Mediv to do that. So even still, he's not really trying. Gunza's been very aggressive. We've had a few moments where against the portal, he's been able to interrupt or stun as we just saw. But in just standard straight up team fights, he's often overextending, putting himself into Gondor's grab range, and the burst on the side of Blossom is too much for him to, to live through when he gets hit by Spear from Sonya. Rhaegar goes in, gets slowed by the totem, and doesn't go home. I'd love to see the stat screen at the end of this game to see how much damage he absorbed and how much, uh, how many deaths he has. Gondor, Gondor dives in knowing that portal will be there. The gets root, the damage. Annoying. Always protected. 
As the Moro is going towards the keep now. Yeah, and this protection, as you said, has really empowered this Diablo pick. Without with this protection, Diablo's been able to do a lot more. And it's basically just saying, like, you know, you've got this point click charge and this toss. I'm gonna protect you, just go click on them. I'll keep you healed up. And then, you know, if we need Ancestral, we will. They grab a keep with this. Looks like they want to steal another Shaman camp. This push up forward from mid is scouted by Medivh, so... I don't know if Miracle can contest this anymore. The thing is, they're not 16 yet, and... This is not, it is not the worst timing, but if they lose this one, they will basically be losing the game very likely after the fight, so they're not really engaging. Big risk, bigger risk for Miracle. So ended up just losing the camp. Also, they have Hanzo, so it's going to be easier time just clearing up that camp. We'll just take a few seconds. What a mess for Miracle. And what do you do here? As long as... If Sniper is able to get some damage onto Cassia or Regar would be the best target, but has not been happening at all. Yeah, I mean, he just... He can't find any targets because if he gets in range to do so, he's going to get stunned by Gondar. And even if Gondar has to go out of his comfort zone to do that, Modern Life has so far been doing a great job of putting that protection on him. Now that they have circle protection, they can all go in in these moments, uh, even when uh, Miracle is in good position to help protect the Tracer when she's trying to toss those bombs, because it's going to be a big ring of protection or a circle of protection, if you will. Uh, Miracle's going to invade this. I think just because they're desperate, they almost lost the second keep. Maybe their last chance. Ooh, they didn't even get the camp. Now EJ2 is taking some extra damage here. Sonic Arrow comes out. They spot the positioning. They want to go for Gondar here. There's a good power slide. Protection comes through. EJ2 eating a lot of damage, but Polybomb is required to peel away. Sniper recalls back. Caught by the second grab there. Gets traded out. Protection nullifies the pulse bomb. Sanctification, or it's not sanctification, ancestral healing is going to connect onto Dudu this time. Oh, and they even got portal for the chase. Great root here. This might actually save the rest of the team. That was a great match with how Gunza was peeling for his teammates. But Sniper was caught by Diablo. No extra pulse bomb or damage was connecting. Little from Hanza, but not enough to get the kill. If you want to get the kill, you have to really use that last right or the pulse bomb to pick that up. But protection, of course, helps a lot. It's best case scenario for Miracle, but hold on as they jump in. Polybomb's up again, so in this choke point, it's going to be difficult to approach. Win ha winning halftime. The top push is still going, but it's really uh, neutered a lot by the top catapults. It just didn't really do too much. Didn't even start touching that port, so they didn't have to deal with that. That wasn't pressure they were really worried about. They can just focus all their attention on the Immortal Race. Okay, targeting here again on to H82. He does get out, jumping over the side of Gondar here. Blossom just wants to finish this Immortal at all costs right now, but they are going to be forced to push away. Sniper tried to get a pick there, but didn't actually get the pulse, but here comes a really nice power slide. You see the Polybomb forced to be used. Last Rite's going to get the kill into Cassia. Wiz does get blown up here by this pulse bomb. No protection this time. As Modern was very far away, even Gondar is very low now. Doing so much damage though, Diablo actually will do a lot more damage than the most tanks if he's protected. What? He's carrying this fight right now. Without he, the DPS. And he has, he, he's going to use another APOC here. He has a huge amount of, of healing rate right now. AJ2 gets taken out, Judy. I don't think he's going home. Okay, Gondar went the wrong way. Judy's still... Oh, that would have been huge. Okay, he's still going to get the grab, I think. Charge. There you go. One auto should do it. Nasong steals the kill. Kill Thief. Look at this catapult push. Four catapults top. Immortal's going to go bot. Full shielded Immortal. What did you say about Diablo Pick Wolf? Look, you know, maybe <laughs> I underestimated it. I'll, I'll, I'll give him the Diablo Pick. It was pretty good. It struggled in the early game, but once he got his souls, he was able to heal through. I mean, he would trade well because he had the protection. He would walk away, uh, you know, somewhat damaged but never killed. And then he has huge regenerate. He has one of the highest health pools in the game, if not mm -hmm. the highest, I suppose, with pulls, uh, full souls. Did Gondar ever die? No, Maybe he did once? not die. I he did not die, right? Well, I mean, after getting his souls. No, he yeah, did zero. die a single time, actually. 
Zero death on the he left. He has also top hero damage. That's what this graph shows. 45k. Han, look at Hanzo damage though. 93 even with that not too many kills happening. Doesn't matter if you can't get the if you can't get the kills as you say. Mm -hmm. Oh look at this. Charge after charge. Both okay, I'm never gonna question this pick again from Gondar. I'm sorry to everyone who is a Diablo fan. Sorry to Gondar if you watch this pod. Guys, never we question. did it. Whoop said sorry. I'm There's sorry. an NA arrow passing by. Gondar goes in again. Gunza seems to be the target. This one actually not the most. Mo oh, look at that set. Interrupt mosh. on the mosh. Didn't even need to be interrupted. Last rights here, not going to do anything to do do. There's the blow up. This is game over. Diablo, the new meta, probably not, but Gondar is making a case for it. Judy, getting it chipped away here, does escape into the Hall of Storms, trying to do what he can to delay this and to pad his stats. Nasong. May have harassed his last. He escapes because the immortal kills the core. And that is going to be 